I'm Audrey Foster with Nebraska Extension in Custer County. And today we're gonna to be exploring a wide range of resist art. We're gonna start off with Mesa, one of our Custer County 4-H'ers, teaching us about a, a few different types of resist that she enjoys. And then I'll be demonstrating how to do a toothpaste lotion resist. Before we begin with our resist art, we should understand a little bit about where resists come from. And batik, which is a form of resist, originated in Java, Indonesia in the 6th or 7th century BC. However, we also see evidence of batik way back in 4th century BC in Egypt. So what's batik and what's it have to do with resist art? Well, batik is a form of resist. And a batik is where you place hot wax onto fabric and that creates a design, which is a form of resist. A resist is when we place some form of a substance, such as hot wax, but we could also use washi tape or our toothpaste and aloe vera lotion mixture or even things such as rubber cement onto other surfaces such as our paper or fabric. And we do this strategically so that we get a design. Today we're going to be exploring with a variety of resists. Mesa will explore washi tape, rubber cement, and crayons and a couple others, and then I'll demonstrate the toothpaste and aloe vera lotion technique. Hi, I'm Mesa Jones and today I'm going to be showing you all about resist watercolor. The reason why I like resist watercolor so much is because it really brings out my feelings and it really relaxes me. So today, what you will need to do with this watercolor is you'll need a jar of water with a paintbrush and then you'll need a watercolor pad. I recommend the watercolor pad because it's really thick and it doesn't bleed. If you use regular copy paper, then it'll just bleed through. And then you'll just need a regular paint, watercolor paint palette. So for the first technique, all you'll need to do is you'll need to get your crayons or pastels and just color it and create your picture. And then what you'll need to do is you'll need to get your watercolor and just paint right over it. This is a really easy technique for young kids too. So for the second technique, all you need to do is you need to draw your picture with a very thick layer of rubber cement. And I would let it dry overnight. So then in the morning, it's ready to get paint. So then you paint over your picture, and then you let it dry, and then you start peeling off the rubber cement. So for the third technique, all you need to do is apply your washi tape to your watercolor paper. And this is what washi tape looks like. You can get at craft stores and usually it comes in different sizes. So then, once you've applied your washi tape, you just start painting. This is what I find most relaxing. And you can do ombre if you want. And then, when the paint dries, you can peel off the, all the washi tape and then your finished project looks like this. So I recently discovered a new technique. It involves saran wrap as your resist. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to load up on water and paint and just paint all all over your paper. And then you take a, a wadded up piece of saran wrap and just put it all over your piece of paper. So then when you're done, it looks like this and it has all kinds of different textures. And just remember, have fun with your art, and then after you're done, make sure to display it in your room. Next up, we're going to explore how to do a toothpaste lotion resist using muslin and an embroidery hoop, along with a few other basic supplies. For this type of resist, we're going to need a few supplies, including an embroidery hoop that has a piece of muslin in it. I've already preloaded mine a newspaper to cover our work area, paint brushes, and you can pick a variety of sizes, a cup for water, a plate for the paint, or some type of a palette, acrylic paints, a pencil, and then to create our resist, we're going to have um, toothpaste 
and aloe vera lotion. I didn't necessarily have aloe vera lotion, so I can buy normal lotion and some aloe vera gel in order to create my mixture in my squirt bottle. And for this, you're gonna want a mixture that's 40% toothpaste and 60% aloe vera lotion. So I've gone ahead and mixed up some in my bottle. I filled it to about here because it's easier to make more than to have too much. My first step is going to be to draw a design on my muslin that's in my embroidery hoop with a pencil. Remember that as you draw this, it's really, really difficult to erase pencil from a fabric. So be very careful while you're drawing. I've gone ahead and sketched out a picture of three birds onto my um, embroidery hoop muslin. And remember that while you're drawing these to make sure that they don't get too detailed because with batik, a lot of details can be lost very easily. So I've just done rough outlines and I can go from there. So, oh, also what I'm gonna do is on each of these lines, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my resist or my aloe vera lotion and toothpaste combination. And that's where the squirt bottle part comes in very handy because then I can just directly apply it to the area that needs it. As you work, remember that all the areas in which you apply your resist will remain white. Now that I've completely applied my resist, I can go ahead and let this dry. I'm gonna go ahead and set mine in front of a fan to make it dry faster. So my batik has been drying overnight and at this point it feels a little bit gummy, but we're ready to paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my paint plate and I'm gonna get the paint colors I want. Remember that anywhere that you applied your resist will dry white, so you don't necessarily need white paint unless you want to blend it with another color of paint. And it's always easy to get more paint, but try it to conserve as much as possible, just so then we don't waste it. Then you can just go ahead and paint your design using your acrylic paint. Now that I've finished painting my muslin with acrylic paints, I'm gonna go ahead and set it back under the fans until it's dry. Now that all my paint is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of my embroidery hoop. Then I'm gonna rinse out my resist with warm water. At this point, all my batik has been rinsed out, so I'm gonna go ahead and hang it up to dry. At this point, after your batik has dried, you can go ahead and put it back in your embroidery hoop, and you're done. Also, if you've made your um, uh, batik into a square or rectangle, this would also be the time where you could frame it or finish it however you'd like. I'm just gonna go ahead and put mine in my embroidery hoop because I like this circular shape. Now that you guys have seen a whole wide range of resists, what else can you guys think of? Are there other substances you could use to create resists? What about the materials that you produce your resists on? Could you apply these resists to different types of textile items or even different projects altogether? You're only limited by what you can't think of, but I look forward to seeing the projects you create using resists.